Elite Gaming. How you doing guys, it's Andrew at Elite Gaming HQ. And as I talked in the other video, I'm gonna show you guys how to put an aftermarket cooler on your RX 480, or really any graphics card for that matter. If you look here, you can see the aftermarket cooler and the size difference between it and the stock cooler. So let me show you everything you need. So first off, the kit came with its own thermal pads and it recommends you using them on its back plate for all your cooling, which is a good idea since its back plate seems like it does a fair bit of cooling with its heat spreaders. But I also went the extra mile and bought my own heat spreaders to go on the RAM and the other little parts that need cooling. But I'll show you where everything goes. Also got extra thermal pads in case I need them for the back of the processor itself. And I think with this three fan design, we're gonna be in really good shape of cooling everything. Now also some people have brought it into my attention that they think that the fan will use too much energy. Well, we don't actually have to plug the fan into a board, we can plug it elsewhere. So now we're gonna start taking out all the screws on the back and the side. Remember to get them all. You can see them here. Here's the side screws you're gonna need and the back ones here. You're also gonna need a smaller screwdriver for those four. And then the exhaust is gonna have two screws as well. Don't forget about them. Once you get all your screws out, you're just gonna wiggle just a little bit just to pull it apart. Don't pry too hard, just wiggle and it'll pop open just like that. Be very careful. And also, you don't wanna rip it apart because it's got a connection to the fan there that you're gonna have to take out. Once we got everything apart, let's take a second to look. We got our heat spreaders here, our thermal pads rather, that connect to a heat spreader. And there's a long thermal pad that connect everything else there, which shows you where you're gonna need to eliminate your heat. So we got these little ones that are going on here, and we have the bigger that are going there. And you also notice, I could show you here, that there's gonna be two that are gonna be displaced, as you see when we zoom in to where the cooler actually fits. Then we're gonna do a little test fit with the cooler because we wanna make sure it fits and what areas we need to protect. Also, the cooler comes with its own thermal paste, but I'll get into that later. I'm not gonna use its thermal paste. I'd rather use my own. Now, what the cooler actually recommends is on the back here, it wants you to put its thermal pads and use this back plate to get rid of all the heat from there. And that's all it recommends for the cooling for the RAM and everything. So you see its pads here, but we're gonna do a little more as I said earlier. Okay, now on to the next step, which is cleaning. Now, I knew my camera was going to give me some focus issues, but I have two point of views here, so hopefully you can see everything that's going on. What you want to do is take a lint-free cloth and use some isopropyl alcohol. Now, I recommend the highest concentrate that you can get because you want it to dissolve off. You don't want to be leaving water or whatever the other continents are, the lower grades, like 50%. I got some 91% here. And you want to make sure you clean off all your thermal paste that was left behind and all the other critical parts. So just give them a good wiping, then go through and wipe them all again, then go through and use a dry cloth. It's the best way I can say to do it. Give it about three goes. Once you feel that everything is dry and clean, you can begin to add your heat sinks. Oh, something I almost forgot to mention is you want to do a little fit test. You want to make sure that everything goes on fine and you have plenty enough room for your heat sinks. By doing this, I found that the two of the RAM areas with their heat sinks would be in the way of their overall cooler. So I decided to use just thermal pads on them. And after all, the kit doesn't actually call for any kind of heat sinks at all. So I'll follow the directions for the backside, which should be adequate cooling. Now there's a couple different ways to do this. You can either, one, use a thermal paste like a, like a glue. It's kind of like an epoxy. I'll put the picture and the link below. For all these extra parts, I'll have the links in the description. Or you can use the thermal pads that it came with. Now the thermal pads that it come with don't hold as well as you would like, but you can give them a little test. I give them a test. I could pick up the whole board with the heat sink, so they did good enough. But some of them I did have to use the epoxy. And then as far as my own thermal paste, I use Arctic MX4, which I've seen some nonprofit reviews say that it alone can lower your temperature up to five degrees C. So it's good stuff, just pick yourself up some for about $7.99. 
so I just covered that bad boy in MX4. Now this is going to cause a lot of debate. Everybody's going to be like, oh, well you only need this much, or you put too much. Well, I'll tell you this. Processors on a GPU do not have heat spreaders, like a CPU. Therefore, you have to cover the whole thing. Also, if you want a pretty good indication of what you should do, let's look at the stock placement of thermal paste. It covers the whole thing. Now I know some heatsink companies also have this practice as well, but trust me, you don't just want to dot, you want to cover the whole thing in this scenario. For a CPU, it's different. So don't be frugal with it, just cover it up nice and even and thin. So after we got all that taken care of, it's time to mount the cooler. So what I did was I applied the screws provided and picked the GPU up and just match it up and slide it down on top of the cooler. I find it the easiest as to put the screws facing up and just line them up and take your time. Don't rush it and just slide it right down on top. Now after this, I put in a couple screws just to hold it tight so I can apply the thermal pads to the back in which the back plate is going to cover. And remember placement is going to be important because this back plate is going to do a good deal to take away a lot of heat from all the other parts besides the processor and also the way I did it the processor as well. I'm also fairly sure that this back plate is helping a lot because when I reach into my PC and I just gently touch the back plate you can feel the heat coming off of it while the rest of the inside of the case is not warm so therefore it would indicate that these heat spreaders on this back plate are actually doing their job and relieving the heat. So I'm very happy that it included such an awesome part to help us keep our heating down to a minimum. Something to note before installing the back plate is the kit recommends that you use a plastic guard and you cut it to size, removing all areas in which your thermal pads are. I find this to be obnoxious and also counterintuitive. So what I did was I took the foam that you find in a motherboard box and I cut it to size and put it in a couple key spots in which heat was not an issue, but it'll still give us distance so we won't have any short. I think with these thermal pads being as thick as they are and this foam, we shouldn't have any problems at all. But I'll show you where I put them. I put them here and I'll just add extra space or secure. Now after you finally mount the back plate with its compression brackets, the kit also comes with these seat clamps that provide proper alignment of the board and the back plate. Something really awesome about them is try to apply at least two of them to the top so you can mount this bracket here to eliminate graphics card slag. Just put them about finger tight so after you get it in your case you can adjust it accordingly and screw it in with up to four screws. I think it really helps and I think it's a really good feature. So now we're about to wrap it up. Got everything done. The only thing left is overclocking in the next video and benchmarks. This aftermarket system should allow for overclocking and better cooling would add to the fact that it's beautiful. Alright guys, well the next video on this topic we'll be doing some overclocking and benchmarking. I'll see you on that one. Thanks for watching. It's Andrew at Elite Gaming. HQ. Bye, people! <laughs> Look, I caught a fucking metapod. Really? You yeah. gonna talk about metapods right now? Yeah! Oh, I almost yelled while you were recording. I was so excited. This Pokemon shit's out of hand. <laughs>